What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie. Um, this is part 75 of my reviewing and ranking Frank Zappa's guitar solos within the context of an album and then comparing that album to all the other albums based on guitar solos only. Um, and we're at uh, Studio Tan. Um, we're almost uh, kind of, we've almost done all of the official canon, everything released while Frank Zappa was alive. Um, it's a number of them left, but only a couple of them have guitar solos. So we've almost uh, finished that. And then we'll got a couple monster sets still to do in the, in the post Frank passing away. Um, there's only two solos on this. There's only four songs on the LP. Gregory Peckery doesn't have a guitar solo. Let Me Take You to the Beach doesn't have a guitar solo. Uh, so we have two guitar solos. Um, the one for revised music for guitar and low budget orchestra. And then we have a guitar solo for Redunzel. Um, and uh, yeah, well, I always, always make sure I get that name right. Revised music for guitar and low budget orchestra. So yeah, just two. That's it. That's what we got. How would I rank them? They're both pretty good. Uh, they're both absolutely fantastic. Uh, but at number two, um, I do have revised music for guitar and low budget orchestra. So the solo is about a minute and a half long, a little over a minute and a half. Frank recorded it. Then he had Bruce Fowler transcribe it. And then he had Bruce Fowler play it on trombone, but I think a couple times on a couple different trombones or he played it, they pitch, they did something to it in the studio to tweak it. Or maybe he used different types of trombone. I don't know. I don't know much about the trombone, but he did it a couple times, not just once. And then they layered it and put it over Frank Zappa's guitar solo. It's an absolutely awesome, awesome, awesome minute and 40 seconds. Um, uh, it is very jazzy, almost reminds me of like, I think this was recorded in 75. And the solo reminds me of like a 73 solo. It just feels like something Frank would have played in like fall 73 like a really good version of like a fall 73 solo i don't know why maybe it's just the tone of his guitar and and fowler's presence um but i don't think this i think this was in 75 that they actually recorded this solo um yeah early 75 so pre bongo fury um but yeah it, it's just really neat sounding kind of doesn't sound it sounds a lot different than other stuff um it just with the trombones on it it's absolutely fantastic um there's a short, I don't know if it would be a solo, but earlier in the song, there's this really like convoluted run, <clears throat> like uh, <clears throat> rhythm, percussion heavy run. And there's a short little burst of guitar over that, but I don't know if it would count as a solo. Uh, but yeah, this one is really interesting. Um, it's just, it's neat to have the guitar and the, the trombone just kind of following along with the guitar. Uh, yeah, really cool vibe. Uh, works really well within the song. And it's a very bright spot in the song. It just kind of, pops in the middle of it uh about a little over halfway through um but yeah that would be my number two um and then my number one is redunzel and really this almost feels like for me like uh like a going away party like uh chester thompson is on drums uh i think this is probably one of the last things they ever recorded it's in december of 74 uh um with this band um, you know, with George Duke, with Underwood on percussion. Um, uh, Tom Fowler is not on bass. He had hurt his hand on tour. And so James Birdlegs Yeomans, Yeomans, Yeomans is on bass. So it's neat to have him. And this Redunzel is just fantastic. Um, the solo is just, it just sounds like Frank having the time of his life. And it's, my only issue is his volume is a little off. It seems like he needs to be louder in the mix. And early on, he almost seems a little overwhelmed by the rest of the band. So that's always bothered me. But other than that, it's just him. It just it feels so comfortable. He's going high speed the whole time. You, it just sounds like this typical redundant outing until like about, I don't know, 45 seconds, a minute in. Chester Thompson starts doing weird Chester Thompson-esque things on the drums. And you realize, oh, yeah. This is 74, man. And things just get weird and funky for a while, but Frank's just like, just like racing through the whole thing. Um, just this high speed race. But that interaction with Thompson and then even the, what Duke adds on keys just flavors this solo in such an absolutely incredible way. Um, and it really is. It's just, it's really high speed, but it feels effortless. It feels like Frank is just like, 
put it on autopilot, but in the best way possible. Like he is just loves this band, loves the energy, just attacks the song. Um, it's about only about two and a half minutes long, but it's a very healthy, thorough, dynamic, just exhilarating two and a half minutes. Um, absolutely fantastic solo. Um, Redunzel, the one from Redunzel. Yeah, but that's it for Studio 10. Two solos. Number two, the one for revised music, which is like, has been overdubbed with trombones also. And then Redunzel, which is just probably one of the last Chester Thompson, George Duke era, 74, Ruth Underwood, just, just playing guitar and jamming. Just absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Oh, where would I rank this album among, among the others? I have it way low. Probably way, 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 way lower than it's supposed to be. Um, I have it at 45. I have it below Carnegie Hall. Only because as great as the... I mean, one, these are Frank Zappa solos, right? So they're all great. Um, because even as much as I love the Redunzel and has it like a special place in my heart, that King Kong solo on Carnegie Hall is just a little better because it's a little more experimental. It's Frank, I think, that the peak of his his early apex exploring new avenues and ideas and really challenging really, really, really what he could do on the guitar. And so I think that's a little more interesting where this studio tan is just like, I mean, the redundant is just like guilty pleasure. Uh, Carnegie Hall is like taking a risk and being rewarded. So I'm going to reward that. Um, and that's it. Everything else, you know, make a jazz noise has two or three solos that I really, really dig that are interesting. So yeah, it's way back there, 45. But again, this is Frank. So it's kind of ridiculous because everything everything on here is, has really great moments. But yeah, feels low, but that's where I'm putting it. All right, thanks for watching. That's all I got. Subscribe, like, share, comment, do all those things, and peace. Talk to you later.